Okay, so we're on journal 28 here, and we are going to be finding the angle uh, for sine and cosine given the value, and these values come from the unit circle. And so theta is between um, 0 and 2 pi, so we do have a limitation here. It's between these two intervals uh, given the trig value. So um, we're asked basically to find what angle makes sine 1 half. So keep in mind, sine happens for the uh, y values, and cosine is the x's. So when sine is 1 half, um, that means that the y is 1 half. So I'm going to circle all the places where sine is 1 half. So looks like sine is 1 half here at pi over 6. So the y here is 1 half. And then it looks like over here, sine is also 1 half at 5 pi over 6. So in this case, I don't see any other halves that are positives for the y, so the, that's the only two angles between 0 and 2 pi. So I'll write that down. It looks like angle pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And so those two angles work within this interval. Now I'm going to try this for cosine. So it's asking when is cosine 0? So it looks like cosine is 0, so cosine is the x value. Um, so x is 0 here when it's pi over 2. And x is 0 here at 3 pi over 2. And I think that's it, at least from this interval here. So I'll say theta is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And now I've solved for theta. So basically, we're using the unit circle, um, figuring out what value that crops up on the coordinate system, and then correlating that to the corresponding um, angle. Um, and then just keep in mind, sometimes you have more than one place that this value shows up. So make sure you look at the entire unit circle. All right, let's get into what we're doing today, which is the idea of solving trig functions. And what I mean by solving is you're trying to find the angle that uh, makes the um, expression or the equation true. All right, so let's practice these solving skills. So basically what I've done is I, we're going to do a comparison of an algebra problem versus a trig problem. So this is a problem. Number 13 comes from your um, textbook on chapter 19.2, and I've grabbed problems from 11 to 22. So here's 13. And um, it's 2 sine plus 3 equals 4. And you have to figure out what x is. You have to get x by itself. So before I do this problem, I just want to show you a similar problem. Notice I brought in the 2, 3, 4, so I kept the numbers the same. The only thing different is that this just has an x. So if you were to solve this problem in algebra, you'd probably first subtract the 3. So you would slowly start to remove things. And then this would be 4 minus 3 is 1. And then you would divide by 2. And so x is equal to 1 half. And so this here is my final answer. x is equal to 1 half. Now on this side, basically you would do this, the similar steps. You try to get the sign by itself. So to do that, you would need to remove the 3. So basically you're solving for sine first. Like you're trying to get the sine or the trig function by itself. So I'm going to subtract the 3 over, and that cancels. And then you have 2 sine x equals 1. And then if I divide by 2, I can cancel out this 2 on here. And so sine drops down, and then we have 1 half. And so in this case, I have to figure out when is sine 1 half. And that was basically our bell work, right? Sine happened to be 1 half at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And that just is using the unit circle to help get those angles. So there are two places where x could be or the angle could be at. So when you're dealing with these problems and you're solving for the x, try getting the trig by itself first, like whether that be sine, cosine, tangent, whatever. Try to get the trig um, expression by itself. All right. Okay, so here I've brought in a unit circle to help us out when we're trying to find 
the uh, values for the trig. But first, basically we're solving for the equation and specifically we're figuring out what angle or x makes this, um, so we have to get x by itself, which is an angle. And so first we're going to try to get the sine by itself by moving the two over. So you want to first always try to get the trig by itself. And so in this case, sine comes down and three minus two gives you one. Okay. So now we can see that the trig expression is by itself. And so we have to ask ourselves, what is sine? Um, what angle for sine does it produce one? So on this unit circle, the place that sine is one or when the y value here is one is right here at pi over two. So notice how that's a one there and it's at pi over two. And so I know that x is equal to pi over two and that's the only place on the unit circle where y is one. So in this case, x here had to be pi over two. Um, so for the next one here, I have a secant here, a secant over here, and numbers on this side, numbers on that side. So just like before, I'm going to try to get all the tricks to one side and all the numbers on the other. So maybe the first thing I might do is like subtract this secant over to both sides so that way I can remove it off of this side. And then that would be 2 secant minus 1 secant, which is just going to be a secant left. I'm going to bring down the plus 1 and the plus 3. And so I'm going to try to get the secant by itself by subtracting the 1 over. So that cancels. And so now you have secant equals 2. And then just asking yourself this. Um, the thing is, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So when you're thinking about reciprocal, if you make this into a fraction, the reciprocal of this is 1 half. And the reciprocal of this value would mean that it'd be equal to cosine. So I have to ask myself, where on this unit circle is the angle x one half for cosine? So cosine represents x value, so x is one half at pi over three. And also looks like, um, five, is that, hang on, that's going to be here at 5 pi over 3. So it looks like right here and here. So also it appears to be at 5 pi, five pi over 3. And those are the two angles that that only occurs. And that's it. All right, so now we're going to take a look at a different method for solving. So again, I'm going to bring it up an algebra problem and then solve it in the trig format. So like this algebra problem here has an x squared, a 2x, and a plus 1. And so like typically when we see something that's a trinomial, you want to try to factor this. And so if you were to try to factor, um, you got to think about two numbers that multiply to give you 1. So that's like 1 times 1, right? So if you were to factor, you don't have a lot of options here. I think you can only choose plus 1 and plus 1. Let's see. 1 times 1 does give you 1. 1 plus 1 gives you a positive 2. So it looks like these factors work. And then from there, you have to set each factor equal to 0. Good thing for us is that both of the factors are the same, so you're going to get the same numbers. So this is x equals negative 1. And then I have to subtract off this side, so x is also equal to negative 1. And there is our two solutions, since this was a quadratic. Now, for this one here, it's the same thing. Cosine here is squared. And so what I'm going to do is try to factor first. But instead of x's, I'm going to have cosines on both ends. And then I have to think about two numbers that multiply give you 1. So this part is the same as on this side. So I'm going to make this a 1 and a 1. And um, because all of the signs here are positive, I know they need to be all positive, but we'll test this out here. So cosine times cosine does give you cosine squared. 1 times 1 does give you 1 on the end. 
1 plus 1 does give you 2 cosine. Um, so in this case here, here are my factors, and I have to set them equal to 0. And so if I were to do that, I do need to remove this 1 to the other side by subtracting. So that cancels. And so cosine is equal to negative 1. And the other side is basically the same. You're going to get cosine equals to negative 1. Once you get to this point here, you want to take a look at the unit circle and ask yourself, when is cosine equal to negative 1? And there's only really one place that does this. It's when x is equal to pi. And so then the other answer would also be x equals pi. And that's it. So um, I hope that was helpful. I'm going to do two more problems from the homework just to give you a little bit more idea on how to use this type of method. All right, so here I have an equation. And I notice immediately that it's a square. And what I want to do when I have squares is that I want to try to factor them, or if I have to, I could use the quadratic formula. So in this case here, I see a cosine square, a cosine to the first power, and then this lonely one will move to the left side, so that way I can count this as a trinomial to factor. So I have 2 cosine theta minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. So based off of this, I could try to factor. So two numbers that multiply give you 1, negative 1 is 1 and negative 1. Two numbers that multiply give you cosine 2 cosine squared is going to be 2 cosine. And then cosine on this side as well. And then the signs here, they're both negative, right? So we got to be strategic about this. So if I make this a negative, then this probably needs to be a positive. Let's see if that works out. So to get this number, I had to do 2 cosine times cosine, which does give you cosine squared. Um, this number is 1 times negative 1, which does give you negative 1. And when you add the like terms, uh, the inner 1 times cosine is cosine. Negative 2 times negative 1 does give you a uh, negative cosine when you add to this inner part. So in this case, I think this is the correct factors, and you're going to set the factors equal to 0. So if you subtract the 1 over, you bring down the cosine, which is negative 1. Then I divide by a half, and so cosine is equal to negative 1 half. But we're actually not done yet because we haven't figured out what x is. But I'm going to go ahead and solve for this one here before I figure out what x is going to be. So cosine is equal to 1 here. Okay, so now we're at the point where we need to figure out what is our x value here. So when x is negative 1 half, let's bring in that unit circle here. Alright, so I put a unit circle here to help us out. So this one's saying when cosine is negative 1 half, so when cosine is your x value and it's negative 1 half, so it's probably in either the second quadrant or the third quadrant. So when it's negative 1 half, it is at uh, 2 pi over 3. And uh, in this case, I'll just write that here. So x is equal to 2 pi over 3. And then there's another place where cosine is negative, and that's going to be down here at it looks like at 4 pi. 4 pi over 3. So at 2 pi over 3, cosine is negative 1 half. And then at 
4 pi over 3, it looks like cosine is also 1 half. Now for the other one, when cosine is equal to 1, um, we can see that that only happens when it's at 0, 0, or the 2 pi. So in this case, x could be equal to 1, or 2 pi. And that's it. So, looks like that's the end of this journal. I made a, um, a journal 28 continue just for extra notes, but I won't be making a video for that. But please do look at the notes if you need extra help.